Joining me now is Jeremy Bash, former chief of staff at the Pentagon and the CIA. Uh, Jeremy, it seems like this is a delicate balancing act with Russia, the sanctions on the one hand, but saying out loud in public he wants to try and de-escalate things a little bit. Do you think that this is the right way to handle it? It doesn't seem like the response from Moscow necessarily uh, fits with what the president says he's trying to achieve. Well, I do think the president is approaching this appropriately. Every time you've got diplomacy with an adversary, like Ronald Reagan had to deal with, with Gorbachev and the Soviet Union, it's going to be a delicate dance. You do want to engage. You want to be very clear-eyed. You want to clearly demarcate what your lines are. And I think President Biden has done that. He has said, look, we're sanctioning you and holding you responsible for the solar winds and massive hack for your election interference, which, by the way, happened not just in 2016, but also in 2020, according to our intelligence community leadership. And in that way, it's a brushback pitch. It's a deterrence against Russia. But look, Casey, there's also a much more dangerous situation brewing with respect to Crimea and Ukraine, where Russia is moving troops. And this week, the nations of the G7, including the United States, issued a very strong statement warning Moscow against further escalatory moves. You know, I'm glad you brought that up. I was going to ask you about that next, because there has been some criticism or at least uh, some rumbling that the sanctions didn't go far enough for precisely that reason, because uh, of those troops that are massing along the border with Ukraine. Um, what additional steps uh, are in in the arsenal for the United States, but also our, our G7 allies as we confront that challenge? Yeah, well, this week, Secretary Austin announced that we're going to be restationing 600 troops in Germany. I think it's part of a broader effort to make sure that our troops are there, prepared and ready in Europe to check any Russian aggression. But again, sanctions, Casey, as I think you were alluding to, are part of the puzzle. First of all, we're going to be doing an enor undertaking an enormous effort to modernize our information technology structure, to uh, bolster our cyber defenses here at home. Second is the sanctions that you saw rolled out this week. Third is there are probably a number of quiet, covert or clandestine activities. I'm not uh, witting of them, but I presume that there are activities that we're going to go out and hold uh, Russian assets at some risk. And by that, I mean potentially some cyber activity that we would engage vis-a-vis -vis the Russian threat. And then, as we noted, uh, troops in Europe uh, bolstering the NATO alliance. Secretary Blinken, Secretary Austin were meeting with NATO partners this week. And I think making sure that all partners, both the United States, Canada and our transatlantic partners, are ready if Russia makes a move on NATO's doorstep. I think that's a strong deterrent against Moscow. Yeah, that's a good point. Uh, very briefly, Jeremy, before I let you go, uh, we saw the surprise visit from the Secretary of State to Afghanistan. Uh, what's your view of President Biden's decision to withdraw troops by September 11th? And, and what pitfalls do we have to watch, watch out for going forward? Yeah, I think it was the right decision. Look, the previous administration, the Trump administration, struck a deal with the Taliban that said that we're going to be leaving. And if we didn't leave, I think the Taliban would have escalated and we would have been forced to escalate. So there's no status quo here. There's no way of just staying in place, peddling in place. We would have had to escalate. And so I think President Biden made the decision. We've been there for 20 years. There are soldiers fighting in Afghanistan today who weren't born on 9-11, Casey. And I think we've gotten as much militarily as we're going to get out of it. In fact, for the last decade, we haven't made a lot of advancements. Al-Qaeda is dangerous not just there, but in the Sahel and Africa and elsewhere. And so we've got to have this standoff capability to be able to hit Al-Qaeda any place, anytime, anywhere. But we don't need troops, combat troops on the ground to do that. All right, Jeremy Bash, thank you very much uh, for your insights and analysis uh, today. I really appreciate it. Hey, thanks for watching our YouTube channel. You should know that you can follow today's top stories and breaking news and catch up on your favorite MSNBC shows all in one place. Download the NBC News app today.